Hello, you're watching Studio Ken. Make sure you don't miss any episode of Studio Ken by subscribing to the YouTube channel. To subscribe, search for Studio Ken on YouTube, click subscribe on the bottom right of your screen and set a reminder. You can also watch Studio Ken on Diamond TV on Wednesday at 18.30 and on Saturday at 19 hours. Studio Ken, the home of Kennedy Gondway on YouTube. Cameroon legend Roger Miller holds a record of being the oldest player to have scored at a World Cup final. In Zambia, we have a striker who has the potential to match that record, possibly scoring at the Qatar 2022 tournament, that is if Zambia were to qualify for the final. But he has refused to play for the national team, saying he is too old. James Chamanga is my guest on Studio Ken today. He won the Africa Cup in 2012, but has so far twice turned down national team collapse, opting to pave the way for the younger generation. Hi, this is Inok Mepu. You're watching Studio Ken. Don't forget to subscribe on YouTube. James Tamang, welcome to Studio Ken. Thank you, Ken, for having me, and uh, it's my pleasure. Not many people know you as someone who likes motor racing. And that's not the reason, the main reason we are here. We'll talk about that a little later. Mm. But at the age of 40, you emerged as top scorer in the domestic league. Are you too good for the Zambian league or the Zambian league is not too competitive for you? Uh, for me, I cannot say the league hasn't improved. Uh, you know, as you grow older, you start to learn a lot of things. Along the way, I've got, I've got more experience now about uh, how to play better in my position. So I cannot say the league hasn't improved or is, I'm just too good for the league. Of course, I have to train very hard. I've trained very hard for me uh, to come back. And uh, for, for me to be a top scorer di directly after the first season, it's a blessing, of course. But all in all, it's teamwork. Uh, the team where when I arrived at uh, Red Arrows, they received me well. The, my teammates welcomed me well. So they've helped me a lot to settle in well and for me to play my football. But with a lot of experience right now, I think with God's, God on my side, I've, I've be, I was able to achieve what I've achieved this season. But... Um, it's an extraordinary blessing for me. Extraordinary blessing as you are describing it. At the start of the league, I'm not sure whether you actually thought that at the age of 40, you end up emerging as top scorer. No. Did it come as a surprise? Uh, of course. Um, first of all, I, I came to the league with a promise to say I'll, I'll try to qualify a Red Arrows to the Champions League. That was my main target. Um, it didn't happen. Uh, of course, uh, with the breakdown, the corona situation. If you saw at the beginning of the season, Red Arrows was doing very fine. We did very well. And to about, about the 13th game, then things started slowing down. We lost form until we, we couldn't qualify for the Champions League. But all in all, um, my, being a top scorer became a surprise to me because things started flowing. The team, my teammates were helping me, goals were coming. Then experience started flowing in, and also now just the comedy started coming. And then I started saying, no, ah, there's an opportunity for me to come out top scorer. Uh, definitely have to work hard. But it came out for me, not really. And I planned for this to come to me as a surprise. What do you think the younger generation of players are lacking that you are able to do? Because you can't have a 40 year old emerging as top scorer and yet you are playing with teenagers, you are playing with people that are in their 20s at the peak of their careers. I think for me it's, it's about uh, repeat, repetition. Some of the things that we do in the game repeat itself. You see, these young ones, they don't pay attention most of the times to the things which they do in the previous games. So when you watch, if you, if you play the games and you see you haven't done well, most of the games right now they're on Super Sport and ZNBC, you have to ask for these videos, look at your mistakes. So you recap on the mistakes, then you can correct them in the coming games. But they don't pay attention. They'll play one game, they'll get satisfied with one game. If they have scored the goal, they'll get satisfied. So the satisfaction level is too low. For me, I think they don't have the zeal, you know, to go on to score every week, week in, week out, or to give 100% performance, not necessarily scoring goals every week, but giving that 100% every week is not in them. In as much as you scored 16 goals in the last season, we've had a situation where a Zambian player, Godfrey Chitalu, a legend, scored 107 goals in one season. And in one of my many chats with the first president, Andrew Kamanga, I would say, you people concentrate so much on the 107 goals. This man scored 80-something goals in the previous season. And that record up to now is not beaten. 107, 80 something goals, 16 goals. Look at the gap. <laughs> <laughs> I think uh, before in Zambia, I think we had more than 16 goals with uh, some strikers, I'm sure. But um, uh, 
football has improved. Okay, uh, there's too much technology right now, too much planning. If you look at the games, uh, teams take time to plan these days. So you see, if you go back to Europe, you look at the generally the European league. Only Messi and uh, Ronaldo have scored more than 50 goals. Even them at the top of the game, they will have seen they have never reached 80 goals in one season. So if in one season they have reached, maybe I don't know, but I think you can. Uh, uh, you can agree with me that the league has re uh, the, si the football has really improved. There's a lot of planning. They study you. They study the players. So now they you know James Wanga scores 16 goals next season. Everybody will be knowing how to plan against me. So it's not going to be an easy season. But all in all, for me, I think football has really improved. So it's not very easy for you to get the, the goals as many as as 80. Don't you think that also is affected by the level of coaching, perhaps that we've got in Zambia? Uh, I don't think so. I think it's. Uh, those things they go into the individual ability. If you look at Messi and Ronaldo, they want to achieve something extraordinary. So you cannot blame to say it's the coach. At the end of the day, like I say, the coach sits outside. So, but what you want? What do you want you yourself? What do you want to achieve? So if, you, if today you ask me a question, the same equation you have been asking me to say, at 40 I've scored 16 goals. Of course, now my record is, is, is there now. It's for me to beat the record now. So it's what, I, what do I want? I think that's what is missing. What is the secret to your longevity? Uh, First of all, the most important thing is God has been on my side over over the years in my career. Um, secondly, I know what I eat. What do you eat? Normally, a diet would be usually to maintain my weight. So uh, normally, I don't want to focus on the too much fat, meaning no, not, not too many eggs, not too many, not too much butter, and too much uh, cheese, and all these kind of things. Uh, these takeaway things normally. All my meals during the season are cooked by my wife. My wife prepares all my meals, so she knows what I need to maintain my weight. So I normally know what to, what, what, what to eat the whole 10 months from the beginning of the season until the end of the season. So you've got a gym in your house. How has that helped you in terms of your physique, your keeping fit? Of course, this uh, uh, simply means I don't have to, I can train at any time because I don't have to drive to go to the gym at 10 o'clock in the night or 5 o'clock in the morning because of the distance where I live. So that helps me to accommodate my program within a short, uh, short, short distance. But this maintains because I need this. When you're growing older, you need to train more. It's opposite. People think when you're getting older, then you train less because I've got experience. But this, for me, it's opposite. You have to train more. So this allows me to train and to keep my, my legs even more active uh, in a space period of time before every game. And why have you been refusing to, to be part of the national team? You are talking about players earlier on. You talked about players not being able to watch the videos and uh, areas where they can improve. Obviously, having you at the national team, one would say will bring the experience that these players may be lacking, but you've been refusing. Yeah, uh, there are two things. When they say I'm refusing, I haven't refused to participate to help them. I refuse to play. That is the difference because you're saying to use the experience that I have, one day I'm sure they'll give an opportunity for me to be with them, to train with them and just to mingle with the players and even just to go through the routine with them. I'm available for that. But to play as in playing, what I mean is that there, there come a time when you have to accept that this is now um, the end for me, for national team. I'm, I'm doing my part at club level to show the experience to the young ones. But at, at international level, I think that seat on the plane to go to the Chani, to go to Kosafa, if I take up that position, then I'm, I'm denying a young one who's going to give us 10 years. For me, I can only give you one year or two years at the national team. Do we need that? 20, 20, 2022, 20, 2030 World Cup, 2026, all this time, you need to groom the young ones that have got, uh, in the age of, of uh, going to be at 29 when it's 2030. They're going to be, 20, they're going to be uh, 25 when, they, when it's 2030. So that's what we need to grow, to groom. Because if you, I, I give you one year, then you don't qualify to the 2020. I already deny the young ones who are supposed to get the experience for 2030. But who knows, maybe you are denying Zambia the time to participate at the World Cup for the very first time through your goals. So that one year may be the most important <laughs> ever. Um, you never know in this life, you know. Things uh, can always uh, tend to the other side. But me, I believe uh, I've, st I've, I've stood on my decision. I'm not going to change it. Um, and I cannot deny Zambia. If God said it was going to be me, I would have done it before. I've done the qualifiers before. Um, I've, I've but how do you know maybe God says it's James Tamanga we're waiting for to take Zambia to the World Cup and possibly beat the record of uh, Roger Miller? Probably maybe next year, this coming season, if I become top scorer again, maybe there's a sign. Maybe in that way, maybe if I if can work hard and uh, play even better than I played this season, maybe there's a possibility for me to do that. But as of now, 
I'm still waiting until to see how the season comes, this new season come. If I can maintain the same performance that I, I produced this, this season, I think there's a possibility of me uh, having a, maybe a 10% inch. Of Your growth. peak as a player came in 2012 when you were part of the team that won the Nations Cup. From that time, Zambia has twice failed to qualify for, for the Africa Cup. How does it make you feel when you remember you were self-lifting the World Cup, I mean the Africa Cup, but now Zambia can't even qualify for the Africa Cup? It's very painful, you know. Uh, Zambia has been, uh, for years, it's a big, it's a big nation in, terms of, uh, in, in the name of football in Africa. It's very painful. What I see from the young ones that they don't have, uh, I've spoken before in many interviews, that uh, I keep repeating the same, the zeal is gone. These young ones, they don't know how important it is to wear the green jersey. Most of them, they are wearing it for, just for their families to know, okay, I'm there to represent Zambia, but not to bring the result that we, we need. I don't see the zeal anymore. They don't have, I don't have the, we don't have the anger. You can't go to Algeria and go and lose 5-0. It's, it's not the coaching staff. It's not, it's, it's not a tactic. It's the zeal. It's the anger in the players. Because at, at the end of the day, the coach is outside. We are in the field as players. We need to talk to each other. Know that, guys, we have come here for business. We have come here for the 40 million Zambians. The, we have to make a difference. So we need to go and do not 100%, but go to do 200%. So I think slacking in, the, in our Zambian players, in these and young players. What do you think, though, can be done to change that mentality? For me, now the programs are changing. You're bringing in the under-17 now with many programs, uh, the under-17, the under-20, 23. 23. Uh, the selection, for me, also the transition, for me, I think, we need to have a proper transition from the old players. Like, for example, right now, Kennedy Mwene the, 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 is still active. These young ones, they can learn from him. Look at the old goalkeepers. Uh, that is the one department. The main department that we have. The transition hasn't been so, so great for me, I think. The young ones, they are rushed into the national team. I think the transition between the old players and the young players has to be done slowly so that the young ones can pick up from where the old ones are, li are leaving it from. Because if you look, the goalkeeping department is very important. That's just one example. But it's very important for us. If somebody is still active, let's talk to them. Have, have meetings with them. But they can come back and try to help the nation because these young ones they have got no experience. You see, when you look at names like Botswana right, right now is coming in the next two qualifiers. If you are going to go into those qualifiers and think it's Botswana, we're going to miss even the next one. How important is mentorship? We've seen players that are active and those that have retired uh, opening up academies. Collins Mbeswoma has done it. Evans Kangwa has done it. How important is mentorship? Because you are saying that these young players miss something. So. Um, now that is the advantage because these guys have been football that have already done these academies. So now they know what is required of a player. So they know what to implant into these young ones. Which is, which is for me, is going to be helping. It's not just about having the money, understand? So what it is that these guys that have done it already, Ivan Skang and everyone, now they bring that understanding of the game and even the, the discipline that is required from these players. Because now them that at the bigger stage like Mbesum has done it. So, these young ones, they'll be able to emulate and look at this and know, oh, okay, this is what... Because if you pick up from someone who just say, okay, I want to have an academy, I don't have football mindset, it's different from just having uh, money and just coming up with an academy with somebody who has been in football. So this is very important because this is going to come from the, uh, the owner and from the people that are around, surrounding him because I'm sure he's going to surround himself with people that have been in football, mostly for work at the pitch because that's where they they need to transform into their the young ones you talk about football not only being about the money but it counts when you've retired how well invested are you um, for me i can say I, can, I cannot go out there to beg for me that is uh that's what i can say um for me i believe uh in god and i believe also what i've done i wouldn't want to ex exaggerate it for me if anyone needs advice on how, what I've done individually and everything. I cannot show publicly to say this is what I've done. But what have you done? In case someone is watching this interview and they want to get something from you in order for you to motivate them. For me, like, like I've said, I cannot go out there to beg. Uh, for me, for, for a meal for my family. I'm able to sustain my, my kids to go to school, 100%. They can, I don't have to uh, worry about those things. So means I've done uh, investments in different kind of forms. So I'm saying if somebody needs a qualification of what I've done. For me, I believe not to openly open up about these things because of me. I, I, I may put it in a close to say it's pride, you know, to try to tell people I've got this, this, this. No, if someone needs to get advice, I've said, like I'm, I've said, I've done investment. 
But someone, if he needs advice, we have to sit down one on one, and then I'll, I'll show them. If it's, it was, must be important, why they must know this? It's not because I just want to show people what I have. No, they shouldn't get intimidated with what I have. No, I want them to be above me. So what I've done already is already passed. What I need to do is to see them also do the same, even more. So if they need advice, they can follow me. It's, I'm, I'm free for advice. How many more years have you given yourself to continue playing competitively? Um, success always gives you a push to go forward. But for me, I'm not following only, only success. My target is for me to see these young ones learn and pick up. So if I can see two, three players coming out of Red Arrows and other teams trying to emulate and trying to, to stay younger and to play better, that is going to give me an indication for me. But at least from now, I can say, okay, not, not more than five years. Are you already thinking about uh, life post-football? What do you plan to do after retiring? Um, I've been in football all my life, so I'm sure... Uh, is going to fall in that line. But I've been thinking of opening up my own agency uh, because I've got um, a contact with uh, my agent that I've been working with over the years. So he's, I'm still in contact with him. Uh, one is in Europe, one is in China. So I wanted now to have, a, like, we have an office in Africa and then we can have a connection between the three of us, one in Europe and one in China, and then we have to working together in this line. Opening up that agency will mean you recruiting players. But the mindset of most players in Zambia is that Europe always has to be the first uh, contact point for you to go to bigger leagues. You yourself played in South Africa, went to China. You've never played in Europe. What do you think is missing in terms of Zambian players understanding the importance of starting with smaller leagues and probably going to mainland Europe? Yeah, you see, uh, you see, football, like I said before, is advanced. You see, you have to understand there are so many aspects in the game that you need to for you to stay longer and also understand the English league. You find that a player comes from German league and they go to Premier League and they, they say it's not good enough. See, in the aspect of the game, you have got defenders, midfielders. You have to understand your function of your position. It's very important for you to understand. Some of these players, they don't understand their function. Like we are playing maybe, say for example, a winger in Zambia. The simplest thing that you do when you are on the wing is to cross the ball. You don't have to do anything. But most of the time, they find that the players will come from the wing. They want to cut the ground with a ball going inside. Simply for me, I think it's simply they're not understanding their functions. That is most of the, what, one, what is the thing that is making us to fail in Europe. Because if you go there, they just look what, what you're doing. They say, ah, you don't understand this. So we need to put you in the second team. People, say, people don't understand their function. It's very difficult for, the, for us to stay longer in the Premier League. And then even just in Europe. But the requirements that are required, the discipline, the recovery, the resting, pre-season, there are a lot of things that are required. It's a different setup from what we're having like in Africa or in Zambia. This is one of the biggest things that is missing from these players. So when you, when you go to a smaller league, for example, Norway, you go or oh, South Africa, you start to understand these things that are required at the bigger stage. On a personal note, how do you describe the football journey that you've been on? I mean, you played in Zambia, went to South Africa, China, back in Zambia. You've never played in Europe. I would die happy, man, a happy man. For me, I have no regrets not going to Europe. China was my Europe. They, they say, uh, for me, uh, I never planned, I, I wish to play in the Premier League because I support Chelsea and other, other leagues, but I wish to play in the Premier League, but it didn't happen. For me, China was my Premier League and I have no regrets. For me, I would die happy man in football, I have no regrets. I'm, I've grown as a, as a person, I've learned other cultures, I've travelled the world, so for me. China was your Europe not a view that is shared by many, especially young players, because it is seen as a destination for tired and old players. For me, I would rather advise them to say when they go there, let, it, let them take the league serious. Uh, if you go there, I've, I've left another record there as one of the longest serving in China. The league there is very serious. The people go there with the intention that there's no football. They come back after a year and start blaming food, they start blaming people, blaming the atmosphere. How, how did I survive 10 years? Football there is serious, and you have to re uh, you have to perform for the way to stay longer. It's not because they love me. The record speaks for itself. So if you go to China and you think it's a destination for you to go and retire, then you're making a mistake. Tevez came. He failed to play. I started blaming people. They brought 19 of his relatives to come and stay with him, but he failed to perform. So you cannot say it's not it's not because it's a retiring place. You've got a younger brother who plays for Power Dynamos, Luca Chamanga. Yeah. Who between the two of you is greater than the other? So far, it's, it's me because, of course, I'm older <laughs> and he's younger, so he's yet to beat my record. So after he gets to 41 and I see the record, then I'll know who's better between me and him. But so far, it's, it's me because him is learning, he's coming behind me. I've done already my part, so I, I'm yet to see how he's going to compete until 41. 
and see what he's going to do. How does it make you feel when you see him playing? It makes, it's, it, you know, it's, it, it makes me proud that uh, Ichamanga is lifting again the name of the Ichamanga family and also is going to is going the way I dreamt or felt he should be playing football in the right way because I know how God has been in my life and I've been wanting to see my, one of my siblings to go in this direction. Luke has really done it for me. It makes me feel proud and I'm looking forward to an opportunity to see him in the green jersey. What is your view of the local coaches compared to the pedigree of expatriate coaches? Uh, for me, I think uh, they, are, they, are, they, are, they, are, they are blending in well, of course. Uh, we cannot say they have, uh, they have really overturned the, uh, the tables completely. What I mean is uh, we had to qualify to the World Cup. Um, other coaches have done it before going to the Africa Cup. So that is generally the average of what we can look at at the coaches. So right now we are talking about now the newcomers now wanting us to take us to the World Cup. So means then we can see the comparison to say, oh, okay. But otherwise for me, I think it's improving slowly. We've got a lot of now uh, information because we can have passport uh, live games, uh, uh, ZNBC live games. So a lot of, you can gather information. Long time it was, it was difficult, I guess, for the coaches. But right now they've got a lot of information that they can gather for them to improve. But otherwise for me, I think we are improving. What is your view on the foreign uh, players that we've got in the Zambian League? There's no quota system and others argue that the presence of these foreign players, the unchecked presence of the foreign players, is actually hindering uh, the development of Zambian players. No, I don't, I don't, for me I don't agree uh, with what people have been saying about the foreign influx of the foreigners. You see, it's about you as an individual. You see, when there's competition, that's when you can play better football. You see, they're talking about the number of foreigners. The problem is the quality of the foreigners. What is the quality of the foreigners? What, what, look, when you're buying players, don't just follow videos from three years ago. Somebody scored three years ago, he scored a four, five goals, seven goals, nine, nine goals, three years ago. That is not a foreigner. That you, you have to see his current form. Are they, uh, Zambia is a big nation. Don't, don't, you can't just go to Zimbabwe and go and be pick a player who's playing in the, lower, in the, the lowest team. You know, he's never played for a national team. He's, never, he's not going to add value to the league. So when you're bringing these foreigners, you have to know what they have done in the current form, not like three years, five years ago, and then you bring this foreigner into the Zambia League, you won't add value to our players. There so will be no competition. So you think they're adding value? Some are adding value, but some, just where he has done well, Zikiru has done well, those people are adding value, they bring competition to us. If you bring average players that just come here as a foreigner, they're sitting on the bench the whole season, half the season they've never scored maybe five goals as a striker, then it's useless for them to be in this league. So you have to be careful when you're recruiting these foreigners. We need, them, we need the people that are going to bring competition, they are going to add value to the league. Otherwise, for me, I think some of them that they are bringing, it's not necessary for them to be here. Tell me about your motor racing passion. <laughs> Even people were surprised when they saw me on a bike, when, uh, when I bought my first bike. Um, they were like, ah, how come he's a football player and uh, he's on a bike? Um, Brentino Rosso has been my role model for a long time. I've been watching motor racing for some time. Of course, I don't know much about motor racing, but I love motor racing. It gives me a free mind. When I'm on a, on a bike, I go for, for a mile, I go for three hours. It gives me a free mind for me to think through and think through my life and just to appreciate God in a different way. James Tamanga, thank you very much for having spent time on Studio Ken. I really appreciate my man. Pleasure. Hi, this is Inok Mepu. You're watching Studio Ken. Don't forget to subscribe on YouTube.